So today I'm going to talk about Psycho, released by Paramount in 1960, and directed and produced by Alfred Hitchcock. First, I'm going to talk about Paramount Pictures Company. If you want to know Paramount, you first need to know these two guys, with Zucker and Lasky. They have their own film companies at first, but start in 1914. Lasky and Zucker's famous players began releasing their films through a company called Paramount Pictures Corporation, started by W. W. Hutkinson. In 1916, Zucker managed a three-way merge between his company Lasky and Paramount, buying out Hutkinson and forming the famous players Lasky Corporation. Two corporate Lasky in charge of running the production side. And Hiram Abrams in charge of distribution, while Zucker ran the empire. You'll be much familiar with this logo. You can still see it in today's films. And these are the famous films are released by Paramount. You can see Iron Man, Titanic, Godfather. So then I'm going to talk about Alfred Hitchcock, the director and the producer of this film. Hitchcock is known as the master of suspense. In the style called Hitchcockian styles, using most of his movies, includes a lot of use of camera movements, use of filmmaking techniques. He frames shots to maximize anxiety and fear. Next, I'm going to talk about the film Psycho. I'll go in this order first about his background, and then I'll give a brief summary about the story, and in my opinion, both positive side and negative side, and then I'll come to a conclusion. So first, I'm going to talk about the background of this film. Psycho, nineteen sixty, was directed by Alfred Hitchcock, based on the novel of the same name, and stars Jenny Lee and Anthony Perkins. And it's one of the most influential horror films that ever made. When this film came out, it shocked the entire world. But a lot of people didn't have confidence in it when it's in this production. Paramount didn't have much confidence in this film, but Hitchcock was so enthusiastic about this film that he didn't take his normal salary. He chose to take some earnings from the potential box office gross. And Alfred Hitchcock ended up making millions on this movie. Next, I'm going to give a brief summary about the story. Psycho tells the story of a woman named Marion Crane, played by Jenny Lee, who embezzles forty thousand dollars from her employer and goes on the run. She checks into the Mo- Bates Motel and meets Norman Bates, a very friendly motel owner who is under the control of his overbearing, psychotic, and murderous mother. Then I'm going to talk about the best cast. In my opinion, it will be Anthony Perkins. He plays both Norman Bates and his mother. And the mother personality is like the killer side of him, but Anthony Perkins and his performance as Norman Bates is mainly the Norman side, who is totally against that cast with this killer, the evil person that we have to hate. He is such a handsome and charming and. Is gentle and friendly. You're not really going to go out again and drive up to the diner, are you? No. Well, then, would you do me a favor? Would you have dinner with me? I was just about to myself. You know, nothing special, just sandwiches and milk. But I'd like it very much if you'd come up to the house. I, I don't set a fancy table, but the kitchen's awful homey. I'd like. Yeah, and you get to see a little shades of where the evil started to come out. Like one of my favorite scenes in the, his performance is when she gives the suggestion that if your mother is so ill, why didn't you put her into a home? Slowly in that conversation, in that scene, you start to see that kind of spread from Anthony Perkins, from the friendly Anthony Perkins to evil Anthony Perkins, almost kind of transitioning into his mother. Some place. You mean 
mean an institution? A madhouse? People always call a madhouse someplace, don't they? Put her in someplace. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to sound uncaring. What do you know about caring? So in my opinion, really taken to a new level with the performance of Anthony Perkins. And next, I'm going to talk about the best plot. It will be the shower scene. It's the most famous and celebrated scene in this entire film. And back in the 1960s, when you watching watching this film, when it's first presented to your audience, nobody expected this happened. When you get Janet Lee, you know about Marion Crane, and she has a little interaction with Norman Bates, and it seems like there's something weird flirtation something weird about the mother and she goes in to take a shower and the shadowy figure comes okay the shadowy figure comes in totally kept in the darkness side and the famous psycho score comes on, and Mary Crane gets stabbed to death in a way it's very violent and graphic in 1960. Now this is pretty tame, but it's shoot and edited is just brilliant because it's not, not really a very bloody scene. There's only a little bit of blood like in the water, and you know the blood drips, and kind of use that to, as I expect, to show the blood is actually coming out of her. And then I'm going to talk about the negative part. The only time I think this film's not so that perfect is I'm not going to downgrade it for it because I understand that at that time Hitchcock probably thought it was necessary is the doctor comes out at the end and basically explain to the audience that Norman Bates had a split personality and he's been acting like his mother. He only half existed to begin with. And now the other half has taken over, probably for all time. It's just a lot more of explaining. I can understand it without this. I think I can totally understand what it, the story is talking about. And I also understand for the audience at that time, Hitchcock was concerned they wouldn't get it. But I do wish that he had trusted them a little more. Because nowadays, you know, um, our film evolved, our taste evolved, our interpretation, a way to observe things, all evolved since 1960. So there is actually some scenes, some acting ways in this film is a little bit weird as a modern audience. Nevertheless, Psycho remains incredibly influential and still very thrilling and very scary today. And it's not for any of the reasons you expect it to. It told its story in a very unique way, in a way that audience hadn't seen at the time 1960, in a way that today in 2020 we still don't see that often. And it did with so few things. We have a very sparse amount of characters, a small amount of locations, only a few death scenes. This film doesn't have much violence or nudity. What we have instead is the horrifying suggestion of what goes on behind closed doors. The violence is not what scares me. What scares me more is how our brains fill in the gaps of the things we are not seeing, the invisible things. That's scary because our imaginations are far more scarier than anything a filmmaker can show us, and that's what Hitchcock understood. Psycho is an absolutely masterpiece, and I'm glad I could give it a rewatch, because before I can just say I respect this film for its um, craft, its legacy, what it did for film history. But luckily, after several times rewatch, I can see now this film is. I totally appreciate and I enjoy it. And Psycho is one of Alfred Hitchcock's most celebrated films, his greatest shocker and 
if you are a Hitchcock fan, you haven't seen this. That's very strange, but you should definitely check it out. Or if you are interested in horror movies, Psycho 1960 by Hitchcock will always be well worth watching. And that's all. Thanks for your listening.